Hello and welcome, this is now question um, number four. Uh, I probably should put it up there, I'm sorry. Start to get a habit of that now. Uh, just like organised for once. Surprising. Anyway, uh, so what we're doing is uh, June 2014 for AQA, this is the C3 um, paper. This uh, particular question, just about uh, graph transformations. Um, I said the only C3 bit, the only A level bit, uh, well, not the only A level bit, the, the only second year bit, thank you, are in second year doing this, um, is the modulus function, the only C3 bit this really. Could have just said that, but you know, went back to the fun of uh, four seconds. As I said, the only A level bit is the modulus bit, now what that looks like. The rest of it um, is just C1. Or whatever you did, graph transformations in. It's just graph transformations. That's all it is. So part A asks us to find y equals the negative of the f modulus of the function of x. Now what that means is negative sign and then two slabs on either side of the function of x. Now that's not the x bit, that's the whole function of x. Now what does this tell us? Well let's break it down before we start wetting our pants. Uh, as I'm sure you do when you watch a video. Oh, maths. Great. Anyway, so what we're saying here is if we break this down into steps. Okay, so the y equals just the function of x, the, the modulus of that. What we say, so I'm going to draw this in a different colour, because um, I can. Uh, right, okay, so just put that back. That. So I'm going to draw y is equal to the modulus of the function of x in blue. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, it says... For the y coordinate, so a y coordinate would equal the positive, because remember, all the modulus does is turn to positive. If it's already positive, it doesn't have an effect. But if it's negative, weirdly enough, it turns to positive. I don't know why, don't care. And you shouldn't either, really. Well, you should, but whatever. So what we're saying is a y coordinate can never be negative, because y equals something, and if y equals only the modulus of the whole function of x, then x can be, there's nothing x can be that will make y negative. So therefore, if we look where y is negative, it's obviously below the x-axis. So therefore, the curve never goes below the x-axis. So that's a long-winded way of just saying bounces off the x-axis. Really. So what we're going to draw is I've put the points on. This is what you're given in the um, paper. So I just wrote it down because I'm assuming there'd be a good group of people watching this video right now who won't be bothered to have the paper with them. You know, it's uh, their loss, but turned into their gain. So sorry about the people who actually bothered uh, with this, but whatever. So anyway, the points that I'm going to put on before I draw anything, uh, minus three, so you don't need to put zero on, and then two, a bit closer on the other side. So what I'm going to draw is um, I would do this in uh, light pencil. Uh, if you're, if this is, this is how I build up to it. So what I draw is from zero, from infinity to negative. Uh, so the first bit so up to negative three. I draw how it is like that. But because it bounces up, it reflects above the x-axis because it's not done anything apart from just turning the coordinates positive. So it goes like that. Instead of going underneath, it, it reflects this bit on top. Okay, and then sort of double bounce, so like a sort of messed up M shape, and then it continues. So I call that y equals the modulus of the function of x. Now, what it wants is the negative of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say, okay, well, this is the function of x. When we go from the function of x to the negative function of x, this is a messed up way I think of it going back to C1. When the number is with the x, when you're doing stretches, so if it's y of f of 3x, then it's parallel to the x-axis. Correct? It's, that's what it does. But maths wants to mess with your brain. So when you reflection, if there's if the sign is with the x-axis, then it's actually reflecting in the y, not the x. So therefore, the x-axis reflection occurs where the negative is outside the whole function, not with the just x bit. So what we're saying here is because the negative is outside the whole function, um, and really, realistically, it, it'd be pointless having y equals the negative of the positive function of x because 
Oh, we know it just turns it positive, so it had, would probably have no effect at all on this. Well, probably would. it wouldn't. Um, anyway, so just what, uh, confusing you more. So what I'm saying is this is a reflection in the x-axis, which is just confused what we've just said because what we've just said is uh, the y equals a function of x and y can never be negative, so it's always above the x-axis. Well, that's correct, but that is just for the y equals the modulus of the function of x. Now, what we're doing is that's the first stage, because we've done the modulus, now we need to do the negative, the reflection of that in the x-axis. And now you can see, well, I could have just done negative of that and gone, oh, well, it's negative, isn't it? it's going to be below the x-axis anyway, because I'm sure, as I said, that's what many of you would have done. So, what we do is we just reflect this in, back in the x-axis. So, all of it now. So, just as it's performed there. So, that's y equals the negative of the modulus of the function of x. So it's a load of maths words. So that blue, that black line is what you should draw and the blue one is how to get there. Now obviously in the exam you'd rub that uh, blue one off there so I'm just going to quickly go over it with uh, my thumb because you know that's what you can do in the exam. Okay so that's how you would do it there. Hopefully that makes um, some kind of sense how we built up to that. Okay. The negative, the next one, this one over here, so you can ignore them signs. Now, what we're told is, again, going back to this graph, y equals function of x, we're told to draw the curve y equals the function of just the modulus of, so the function, now the modulus sign is just with the x, but instead of being just an x, it's the modulus of 2x. Now again, what we need to do is break this down in a similar way to the way we broke down the first one, so in steps. Now the th thing that you're most likely to spot, um, the easiest bit, is this 2x. So if we ignore the modular signs on either side of the 2x inside the brackets, what does f of 2x mean? Well we said just then, when the number is with the letter inside the brackets, in, so x, well it's a letter, so get rid of it all. Um, so it's like what I meant, see if you're paying attention. Because of my voice, I know, it's quite boring. I have to listen to it all the time, you know. Anyway, does it get away from me? So, f of 2x, that means uh, stretch parallel to the x-axis with a scale factor of 1 over 8. Basically, it just means divide it by whatever's with x. Okay, so what we've got here is f of 2x. So, we're going to divide both of these points by 2. Because there's 2x, f, y is what f of 2x. So what we're going to do is just put the points on. So 2 over 2 is obviously 1, and negative 3 over 2, well, you can put negative 1.5, but I'm going to be awkward and put negative uh, 3 over 2. Okay, so that's the 2x bit to dealt with. Now, we need to incorporate the modulus of the 2, of the f of modulus of 2x. Now, what we had before was the modulus on the outside. Now, what we said there was, well, that means... Any, whatever x is, y is always positive. However, for this, because it's just with the x, what this is saying is, when you put f of 3x, you say, well, well, wherever x is, you put x. Well, that's just showing it how it would be. That's why we've got y equals f of x. Or if you use y equals f of 3, then whenever you see x, you put 3. Um, right, so what does this one say? Well, it says... Wherever you see x, put the modulus of 2 of that. However, you may have earned a question, so it's easy to think of this as something like this. So y equals, uh, say, I'm not saying this is the curve by any means, so y equals 3x cubed cube plus 2x squared, take 5. Right. Now, if we just did the modulus, if we did the modulus of the whole of it, then this is, because we say y is equal to something, that's equal to the f of x of that. Okay, so what if we did the whole of the modulus of f of x? Now that function of x is not just the x's, it's the whole thing. So if we do the modulus of the whole thing, the whole function, then we're going to turn this minus 5 at the end here. That's going to be positive. If x is 0, if you say, then y is going to be positive 5, because y would be negative 5, and you do the modulus of that, you get positive 5. However, if you just took the modulus signs back out and rewrote that as y equals the f of the modulus of x, then whenever we see x, we put the modulus of that. So this would be fine, fine, positive, hang on. Because this minus 5 is, has not got an x associated with it. 
So we can't replace that with a positive figure. We can't change it. So therefore, this y coordinate can be negative. So what we're saying, how does that help us to draw the graph? Well, not really much. But what I'm trying to say is, if you remember that the whole, the modulus of the whole thing is always going to be positive, then this way can only apply to the other function, the other modulus thing. So basically a reflection from right to left. I could have just said that, but you wouldn't have understood it really well. I wouldn't have done it. Because this x is always going to be positive, it's sort of a reflection, really. Um, so that's how you can think of it, from right to left. Okay, right, so, um, first thing I would do is, as we did with here, draw the f of 2x on there. So, uh, I'm going to draw, so I've explained both steps now. So, either you can have a pause of the video now, have a go at that, by drawing the f of 2x, and then um, doing a reflection from right to left, or you can just uh, be lazy, and probably what I don't do, just watch the video. And uh, say, well, I've done it, and I didn't get it at that point. Because he was waffling on about himself too much, and he was boring me to death. And I kind of died halfway through his video. So anyway, the, as I'm assuming you've uh, not died, so what we're going to do is continue to watch this video. And uh, do some more maths, obviously. The Green Day CD is gone. Can't get better than Green Day. Anyway, so what we're going to draw now is the f of 2x. Right, so I'm just going to draw it as, I, as this is up here. So the f of 2x goes through something like that. So that's why it's called the f of 2x. Okay, so what we're going to do now is draw um, the what it's actually asking in the question. So what it's saying is the modulus of 2x. Now, Right to left, remember, so what you can do is just ignore this left hand side, I'm not bothered about that, so it's right to left, so therefore we just copy this right hand side on the left hand side. So I don't know what you want to do, so therefore you, you just sort of ignore this line on the left hand side, um, and then copy it over, so you get like a double hairpin sort of thing, so this becomes now minus one, and you put the coordinates on there. Okay, and then you'd end up with something like that. Right, now, um, I just feel I should mention this, if you're watching this and you've, because um, I normally do my videos on an Excel, I don't really do my AQA, uh, I don't really, I don't. Now, in an Excel, when we wrote 1 and minus 1 here, you would write zero, uh, 1, 0 and um, minus 1, 0. But for AQA, you're happy just to write 1 and minus 1. And I'm pointing this out because you do need to write the coordinates and not just the shape of the graph um, because otherwise then you would, could have just been drawing the modulus of the original graph so you need to put the coordinates in to show you realise oh we divide all x coordinates by half because it's quite hard to show it um, on just by just drawing it unless you did it to uh, stupid proportions then it'd be you know measured it out you could just simply write down the coordinates right so that's question um, B, done and dusted. Right, um, so the next question says, uh, describe a sequence so that you don't have to draw any extra things for this, um, of two geometrical transformations that map the graph of, uh, oh, I will, I thought I'd get away with it, just explain it. Uh, y equals the function of x to uh, y equals uh, the f of 2x plus 2. Now, two geometrical transformations. So it's just asking two transformations that go from y equals f of x to y equals f of 2x plus 2. Now, first thing I would focus on is, well, the, the plus 2. Now, because that's inside the brackets with the x, it's actually um, moving left or right. Now, the way I think of this, um, so we've got y equals f of x here. Now, I imagine this has to the same value as it did before. So if you add 2 inside the x 
brackets, because that has to equal the same as it did before, then the x must be reduced by 2. So if it's reduced by 2, it's moved to the left. That's how I think of it. But you could just think of it as moving to the left, it's opposite, because it's a maths and it wants to make you die in the exam. It's kind of an inconvenience, right? So that's the plus 2, just move to the left by 2 units. Um, so that's your first statement. It says the graph of uh, the first graphical transformation, doesn't matter which one you pick, uh, it moves to the left by 2 units. Now there's 2x business, we've talked about it here. It's um, where the graph is stretched parallel to the x-axis by a factor of 1 over 2, or a half, as all the humans in the world call it. Now, what I would say um, at that point is just saying, okay, well then, all the x-coordinates are divided by 2 or times by a half, just to make sure the examiner, you don't get a snotty examiner saying, oh, well, I didn't do that, I'm not giving him a mark. Um, because people like that, um, they just want you to die and fail. So it's just inconvenience of life. So anyway, that's kind of what's happened here. Um, so just to recap that, because I've waffled on a bit, the graph has been moved two units to the left and... Um, Stretch parallel to the x-axis with a factor of uh, a half or one over two. Okay, so that's two statements you would have for C part one. C part two, um, find the coordinates of the image of the point P um, for minus three. So you should write x is equal to four, y is equal to minus three. Um, under the sequence of the trans transformations given in part C part one. Now all this is saying is this P lies on the y on the original curve, the function of x, what is its new position on this other curve that we've just transformed it to? Now, this is why it's a good idea to write down what happens to the x coordinates, what happens to the y coordinates. Well, in this case, just the x really. Now, because we don't have um, an equation, say we don't we don't know what f of x is. Um, we can't alter the equation and just simply put in our numbers here. What we have to do is think about what we've just said's happened. So what we just said happened, it was moved two units to the left. Now, what does that affect? Well, obviously that affects the x-coordinates. So it reduces the x-coordinate by two. So the first thing I would do is reduce the x-coordinate by two. So it goes from obviously four to two. And then the next thing is times by half, so you divide it by 2. And that is obviously going to get you to a final x coordinate equal to 1. Right, now the y coordinate hasn't um, changed because uh, we've not done anything to affect the y coordinate. Because all we've done is affected the x one. We've moved it to the left and stretched it. We've not moved it up and down or, or stretched it. Up or stretch it down for the same thing, right? Well, that would be you know, whatever. So, as I said, just rewrite the coordinates with x is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 3 or 1 minus 3. Okay, so that's 4c part 2, uh, and that brings us to a close. Question 4. Um, sorry for laughing on about death and stuff. It's just what happens when you start doing maths, really. Um, so, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully. Uh, it's giving you some help there, and uh, we'll see you in question five.